Hero, hello. How are you? Hi, Seahorse. Hey, Prima. What are we doing? Good. Uh, get back on the mic. Dream in a little while, so. <laughs> Rainbow diatom. Is it meant to be a beard, or is that just the way it shows up? Check about my face cam. It works. There you go. How's everybody doing out there? I got the uh, the battery like going early. I figured uh, we get the battery light going, you know, people can warn me about the battery, then uh, I can do the battery command. I put a battery command. Oh yeah, there you go. <laughs> I put in this one too, uh, flashing, there you go. Adder's telling me that my, about oh, my low battery warning one. Hey Micah, how's uh, North Dakota, wherever you are? I'm to say, uh, the state amoeba to start with, look at that guy, creeping. Creeping around. 
flat, boring, ready to go home. <laughs> hey, Glorgana. Why don't you just uh, set some things on fire and then they'll send you home? I presume that's how it works. North Dakota, after all. I got this, uh, Lorg. Lorg's here. It, it might cost you your job. Uh, also, never take my recommendations seriously when I'm on off stream. Those ones you can, uh, stream. I just give people bad advice on purpose. Little ball is reminding you of a snail. Oh, they're kind of like a snail. They're an amoeba. And they crawl around in a snail-like fashion. Uh, house they carry around on their back. Then, uh... No. Sort of, it's not like appendages sticking out the bottom called pseudopod. food. Cute, but you should take it seriously because uh, the Tistate Amoebas, they're out for blood. They're hunters. The, like a lion on the, on the Serengeti, but for smaller. <laughs> they're having a ball. Like something stuck to it. I sure what that is, some sort of little algae. And, uh, oh, you can see there's a little, like, sort of like a flagellated algae over here to the middle of the screen now. You can see it's a little, if you look really closely at it, kind of see those little flagellate. Get it, kind of get it perfectly, see them, I think. Ghost like hair sticking. Uh, I was looking through these samples earlier and I found a, uh, a Vulvox is, uh, Flagellate's colony. Oh, there's another one came swooping in. Let this thing go long enough and it will crawl away. Hero says, memories of Spore just explode in your head. Yeah, a lot of people, that sort of Spore nostalgia when they start out here. Did they have a flashing battery light in Spore? Because uh, it's a feature. <laughs> it keeps growing more tentacles. Yeah. I think the hungrier it gets, the longer the tentacles are. So this one's pretty hungry. And, uh, gonna go full Akira in a bit. Turn into a giant blob and take over the entire stage. <laughs> That's what happens to you, too? Uh, probably what happens to me, too. Get a little, uh, a little hangry. So. <laughs> Tentacles come out. Are rending people apart. <laughs> Mushroom Eleven. Huh. I feel like the uh, Estate Amoeba is 
sort of set the pace for my streams when I see them. I'm just like, okay, we're just gonna slow down and watch this little guy crawl around for a while. Chill out. If it finds some food, what was it whole? <laughs> People, cupcakes, yeah. Uh, it should really make uh, tiny pies. I mean, I know they make like hearts. Cupcakes just like a little cake. I feel like we don't really have a comparable little pie. Plankton Adventures. Oh, hello. Laura. And Unit 038 Danny says, yo. Yo, Danny. <laughs> Challenge accept. How's it going, Laura? I, uh... Sunny on Sunday, and we never did get to play Yard Game. But, uh... You're going to be gone tomorrow and the next day. And I guess we'll have to do it on Friday, you know? I'll have to remember to bring in the cube, cube set. I don't think I'm going to drag in those uh, cornhole cases. They're too heavy. Yeah. Maybe after the meeting on Friday, after lunch, we can go out and play. Only for people who got their work done, though, like me and you. Addy. I wouldn't sit there if I were you. It's on the prowl. And there's a little bacteria right there in front of it, too. This, uh... Guy's asking for it right there. Get too close, you end up inside. <laughs> hey, Jiggly. How's it going? Uh, it's a test state amoeba. So, like a normal amoeba, amoeba, but it's got a house it carries around on its back like a snail. Or turtle. Probably more like a snail turtle. I, uh, I think it's been like... Almost a whole week since I did a microscope stream. And, uh, turned around a little playing wingspan, practicing wingspan the other day, and streamed a little bit. Oh, that. And, uh, <laughs> somebody came in and was like, when are you gonna do microscope stuff again? You know, whenever I want, I guess. I'm here doing microscope stuff. But... Hear weird screaming upstairs. It's because uh, my daughter and my wife are playing Mario Party on the Switch. And uh, it starts off funny games and then it gets really competitive and there's a lot of yelling. And uh, I refuse to play. I don't want to get yelled at. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go look around a little. Let's see what we can find in this. Got this one little tiny guy we've been staring at for like 10 minutes. Like he needs a rest. Die, Tom.
A little diet, huh? Uh, I believe that's a Cerarella. For people in the audience who are curious. What's the shell made of? Oh, for the testate amoeba, they agglutinate or glue together cereal. Uh, it's made out of whatever it finds laying around, basically. Cerarella? Pretty sure? Sometimes hard to tell with all the chloroplasts on it. I don't know what y'all think, but I think that's pretty. More little diatoms there in the background. Shaped one. Rotating flagellated. To me, my friend, way off on the side. Hello? Uh, Euploides? <laughs> Crawling around. Hairs in the back that you looks like kind of looks like he uses like legs. Digital seahorse. Well, it's probably not the species, because that species is African. Same genus. Oh, look at all the bacteria. Crazy over here. Probably why the Euploides is here. It's like, ooh, snack time. Get all the bacteria. Low chance of water bears. Well, if you want to see water bears, uh, I'll make up a sample before the end of the stream. And uh, we can take a look at them, but I've never found them in the water. Uh, it's like all the names that they have, fake names, all of them. Uh, moss piglet, never find them in the mosses. Water bears, I mean, I've actually never found them in the water. So, he's lying to us. Uh, but I do have some lichen here that we could whip up real quick if we're interested in it. Laura? So that you could see a water bear. How long you plan on sticking around? That's the carcass. Uh, it's a uh, Kydorus carcass. Probably a molt. Yeah. I don't have any of that material anymore that we're looking at before. The flatworms in it. For a weird little green. Ladies. Looks like maybe that's a testate amoeba. The arms. Yeah, they're wiggling around. Seems like maybe its home got squished. Dead rotifer? Not moving, so at least there's that. We can see it easily. 
the little predators. Sort of a Piratella like protifer. Hey Sam, how's it going? That one's not moving. Did you hear it? We're looking at some material from a pond nearby. As usual. I picked a different pond this time. This is the pond at Deming Park. Try to find new things by exploring. Look at that. Like a, a little Milky Way galaxy in there. Bacteria. <laughs> a bit of a microcosmos, yeah. Oh, there's one of those little spiral bacterias. Looks like a little snake. Uh... Looks like it's about to get eaten by that thing, too. Sort of coiled around. Everything's moving. Seem to be connected to the pilot junk right here. <laughs> Andrew Shafar. I got a, uh... Uh, Commander Shafar chat band now. Trying to get one for everybody, you know. What's going on here? Is it replicating? Uh, I think we just violated the TOS. Going on right there. That's two Euploides. <laughs> they're, yeah, they're excited about the Milky Way of bacteria as well. These two are friends. <laughs> Pacific? How are you doing? Look, I found some friends. I mean, they're friends with each other. Me. Very good friends, right. They're very good friends. <laughs> I think maybe they're holding feet. But, uh, feet, hands, whatever. Oh, they may have used Tinder, yeah. They may have said, uh, why don't we meet under the Milky Way of, uh, Bacteria. Have ourselves a little snack. Uh, listen to some lo-fi beats. Should be. I got this, uh... Man for Pacific Plankton. And uh, I went in today and I changed the date to Tuesday to Thursday because she's moving her date to Tuesday to Thursday, which means that Pacific Plankton will be tonight. So you're gonna get a double dose of microscope stream. Stick around. I'm gonna let those two have their private moment. I saw uh, a big the diatom we. This is uh. Doris. There. Hey, Doris. Got a big foot. Yeah. Foot's this part. Uh, this one is no more. And it's also home to its own cluster of bacteria galaxy right here. And uh, this is its little beak or rostrum. There's its eye in a shell what stuck out when it died here I didn't kill this one or not intentionally anyway 
It was like this when I found it. Yeah, there you go. Second sort of eye spot of it. Hey, Uncle Bill, how's it going? And Engineer Aku. Double dipping in our micro. Go look around some more. See what sort of magic we can. Still moving. Hey, Tom. Shaped guy right there in the middle. The shell of Ostracot. Looks like it just. See, it's got like a little fingerprint like structure on it. The texture on the surface. So bacteria swarming around it. Like, uh, like it's got, uh, it's home to some diatoms that have colonized it. Organism is there, but you can definitely see the sort of texture. <laughs> You're going to eat and watch. Okay. All the cool kids are here? Yeah, for sure. The way we roll. As soon as I start streaming, the cool kids all show up. Sometimes even a little after I start streaming. If you're here, you're probably one of them. Uh, let's see. Are there transition species that populate by neither cell division or sexual reproduction? Basically, that are missing link between them. Damn, there's species that do both. That sort of flip-flop between them. Diatoms are one of those organisms, those kinds of organisms. They're not alone. The, uh, the Cladocera, some of them, well, the Daphnia in particular, will flip-flop between them as well. And uh, uh, the rotifers as well. Some of the rotifers flop between X and Although for them, it's not mitosis and meiosis, but rather they just lay eggs that aren't fertilized. But for diatoms, they actually flip-flop between meiosis and mitosis. Uh, do environmental in uh, factors influence which method is used? Sort of. Um, for diatoms, they have to reach a size threshold. If they get small enough, and then if they're small enough, they switch over, they become basically capable of sex. And uh, and then the environment plays a role. So uh, they have to have good environmental conditions and then once they're in that sort of like sex on mode, uh, then if the environmental conditions are there, then the whole population basically will sex all party. And then they'll generate to the full size and then switch back to asexual. So, um, for the other organisms like the rotifers and the, uh, the cladocera that do it, they absolutely are driven by environmental processes. Un uh, un Indisputably, uh, they they create sort of uh, resting cells. Oh look! Hey, it's a uh, it's alive. A coronamid of some type. Ed and good news, everyone. A Rudnima, hello. And there's its foot or its tail. That just spikes instead of feet. Pretty cool. Cool way to roll. And uh, get a nice close look at it. 
It's not moving a lot, but it was moving. So it's definitely alive. Like it's got a bit of its own microcosm of bacteria over here by it. Snacking on that, or if it's they're snacking on it. We did just see it sort of curl around a little. Doesn't seem interested. Oh, is interested in that guy. Like, hey, get away from my face, you. Get out my face. Uh. Why are the bacteria aligned like that? There's probably some uh, organic material in the water that we can't see. But just they're feeding on it. Might be related. Yeah, like it might be related to this guy. See, they're sort of like attached to it. So it could be that the, uh, the chronomids injured and they're feasting on like material that's coming out of it. Probably the most likely. Like part of its exoskeleton is ruptured and they're like ants basically right there's like a trail of nutrients in there <laughs> just uh that's where the food is so that's where they are this little guy's pretty cool he's got a little flagella using to whip himself around the brown little brown guy right there barely like a little eyelash super small. Yeah, they're like, oh, we're on snack. Poop them cookies. That's amazing. I agree. It looks like it has eye spots. I think you're talking about the Coronamid, and I believe it does. Uh, I think those are actually eye spots. Did we lose it? There it is. Yeah, I think those are eye spots. Like a dragon. Like orders of magnitude bigger than everything around it. Here on the landscape. Yeah, in this case, the pot of gold is probably organic matter leaking out the side of its body. Oh, hey, my battery ran out. Well, it's a good thing I came prepared with another battery. Hopefully it has a charge. Otherwise, I'll have to use one of the other batteries I have. That's charged. Boop. You have a cord? Yeah, I have a cord. Uh, I just like the batteries, you know? I like the drama. You know how I am. Got that, uh... People looking at the battery, wondering what's going on. When's he gonna fix the battery problem? See, they're all attached right there to that segment. I think that's somebody slayed this drink. Getting. Dragon. Its insides are still kind of moving around.
You wonder how many chronomids one would need in order to be able to taste them? The philosophical question. Uh, are you hungry? Is that what you're trying to tell me, Jiggly? That uh, you're hungry? <laughs> you could uh, you could probably taste them if you. Uh, I mean, they're fairly large. I'm gonna guess 10, and you could probably taste them if you're like one of those super tasters. Thing which got a little bit of granomid in it. Seems like maybe that little dragon. <laughs> you actually are. <laughs> You've been preaching the gospel of mashed potatoes and hot dogs, the Glorgana. Uh, I don't know, when I was in there, you guys were talking about hot dogs. So, also probably something that would... And, uh, and when I saw uh, Open Set earlier, he was grilling hamburgers in front of everybody and then just eating them. It's like, you know... He didn't bring enough to share with the class. He shouldn't be eating it in front of us. You know what I'm saying? So. Uh, what is this thing? Uh, Commander Shafat, it's, it's called a uh, Karanamid. And uh, this is the larval stage. Uh, believe it or not, this turns into a non-biting itch. So, like, those things that fly around that kind of look like mosquitoes but aren't. This is. So this is the larval stage, and then uh, it goes to adult, it grows wings, and flies around for a day or two or a week. You've probably seen them. Uh, if you just Google Coronamid, I think Big Plankton was a little off on her spelling. Maybe she wasn't. Coronamid, yeah, that's right. She's got that one right. So you could you could Google it. Yeah, yeah, we did find one before, and it had an arm that came like one arm that came out like a, out of the middle of its body, kind of crazy. Uh, and I have seen them on um, Record Science has had them. So if you've been on there when she had her microscope going, you might have seen them there too. <laughs> You're a slow speller. Yeah, it's kind of neat watching the, uh, here, the, uh, cloud of bacteria coming out of it. See, they're all lined up right in this one little section that possibly injured. This is yummy. You could just interview a bacteria if you wanted. Jiggly. I bet they could tell you what it tastes like. Probably tastes like carbon. Um, carbon. It was pretty spectacular. Have some little hairs on its body down here as well. I sit here too long, we'll probably get a poop stream, so we don't want that. Or do we? It has a snappy butt. Here you go, you found an article on the nutritional value of coronamid larvae. I mean, fish eat them, so how bad could they be, right? Well, I don't think this one's going anywhere. 
ladder came in, snuck in, hanging around, creeping around the lab, the home lab here. See what else we can find. I haven't even seen Sylvia on stream in so long. Nobody will recognize this guy. Got his little flagella like thing stuck out in the front. A little helicopter he's using to pull him around. Or maybe he just gets uses his tongue to pull him around. <laughs> Get pulled around by your tongue. Helicopter tongue. Hey, open set. How's it going? How's your hamburgers doing? Uh, I was hoping you would raffle them and that I could win it. <laughs> Burger time was great. Yeah. Uh, I came in the house from work and I was like, oh, open set's on. And so I started listening to your stream and then I walked in the door, made a comment about the moon, which I called a weird gray spinning cat. And a revolving moon on uh, top of your stream, and then you said moon cat. It was like I can cat, and she ran off and started drawing a cat. Uh, pretty spectacular cat, I I do say so. And then uh, as she showed it to my wife, and she was, you get this idea, <laughs> like a giant cat the size of the moon. And uh, I was like, where do you think? Open set. The cats in space? Who else? Who else would it be? Definitely got like a little wiggly tongue crawling around with it. I like to imagine. So this guy does not require strong edge skills. Not moving very fast. Zoom into the next level. Yeah, it's a flagellate of some. Probably a heterotrophic nanoflagellate. You won a bacon wrapped turkey steak once. Basketball. Cool. Uh, I was watching an art stream on last week. Add concepts. He was doing giveaways. And I won the first $5. I showed up late. Duke stream dollars and then I immediately asked him to give it to somebody by uh, buying them a game talking about I didn't mean to play little angly tongue guide taking us Quickly. A notification on this. Let's look at. Oh, I'm streaming. Let's go find something. Let the little tongue wiggly guy go. He's just vibing, yeah. Probably because I'm not uh, constantly looking at the microphone. But I can turn the volume up on the microphone a little bit. It's uh It's not picking me up probably because uh I put some sort of a noise gate on there. So it maybe it was just like not loud enough for it. So I'll turn the gain up a little. And if it sounds like I'm talking too loud, uh turn it down on your end, I guess. So 
Desert Dragon. Good landmark. Oh. Uh, that's a Daphnia. This one is no more. Or it's just a Molt. But that is definitely a big one. A Daphnia of some type. I think. These are its swimming appendages that you're seeing right there. The swimming appendages. Uh, they also kind of use them to shovel food into their face. And then it's got a foot-like thing here. And then uh, that's its eye. They have a compound eye. And then this exoskeleton or the test. The big boy. The, can't get the whole thing in the field of view, but almost. There. Really big. <laughs> You're running an experiment, uh, experimental music in the background. Well, uh, pipe it in, open set. We can listen to your music. <laughs> yeah, it's probably dead. There's a bunch of, like, junk laying around. But the bacteria aren't here yet, so... Sure. Maybe they've already cleaned it. Maybe they just haven't noticed it yet. Uh, they have these really cool little spines all around them. Like a fence, almost. Oh, there are some bacteria here. They did find it, actually. It wasn't close enough. You can see those little spiky... Yeah, cricket's leg or something. I wonder if we could make it chirp. <laughs> oh, you have a weekend performance. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, who knows whether they think this is tastier or less tasty. You'd have to ask the bacteria, I suppose, what they think. That's a... It's good when they're dead, because then I don't have to worry about killing them. And, uh... Also, we can sit and watch them without them kicking and squirming around, because that's what they do. If it was alive, it'd be... crawling all over the place. What's going on here? Still not sure what that is. Oh, it's a rotifer. Yeah. That's definitely a rotifer. The, uh... Come back here, Arrow. That's its little foot, and those are its little toes. And it's one of these, like, uh, you know, teardrop-shaped ones. And uh, that's just its insides working right there. That's It's hooked on right there by the, the foot. Hanging out. That's some little ciliate crawling around in here. Very small. Hmm. Don't know what that is. That's a diatom. This? I don't know what that is. I'll tell you the truth. 
like an egg some type. Oh, that's cool. One of these guys with the big tongue, only it's really big. Looks like a crawling bag of marbles. Some sort of amoeba? Cool one. Yeah, tiny amoeba. Love the colors. to see what's up. Hi Science Streams! Uh, Pacific, are you here? Can you give them a shout out or open set? Thank you. On, you guys are all on it. Hey Science Streams. <laughs> the amoebas are great, I agree, because they really set the pace uh, as fascinating but also you don't have to chase them very much. Same. I feel the same way about them. They're like, okay, we can just leave it here. You guys can hang out and watch this weird job, sort of blob full of jelly with colored things inside of it. Roll around from one side of the stage to the other while bacteria swim around it. Pretty neat. Alright, let's continue on in our quest to get through most of the slide, or all of the slide. I swear when I was looking through here earlier, I found an active rotifer, so there's at least some other things in here that will be interesting to look at. Oh, it's a uh, Arajira, I think. It looks like it. So they have sort of a ribbon shaped chloroplast that uh, that they coil in a helix around the outside of the cell, the wall. An interesting spirogyra. Oh, cool. Yeah, I haven't really spent a lot of time looking at the amoebas. I have these test state amoebas pretty regularly. And, uh... Instead of that, that other little amoeba we just saw is about the only other amoeba. Oh, there's a test state amoeba, speaking of which. These guys I see all the time. One's right next to a diatom, too. There's the diatom. That's a Robolodia. Ropolodia Gibba, I think. It 
turtle or a snail. That state amoeba speak with forked tongue. itself off of the screen. <laughs> A little baby Cthulhu. <laughs> Good news, everyone. Hey, C Rays Eleven. Hello, thank you for the follow. Hey, you got the spelling? Did you have to Google the spelling? You're going to be so good at the diatom genera. Pacific Plankton's thinking about taking the diatom course. You're going to get so good at it. <laughs> Pretty cool. True. It's a test state amoeba. So everybody's familiar with what amoeba is probably from like, uh, I don't know, elementary school. Uh, this one has a, a home it carries around with it. And otherwise it's basically the same, although you'll see all of the, the pseudopodes are linked to a central hole, all come out from that one hole. So they radiate from one place, which is the at the base of the, the little testate, the little shell that it's made and you can see the shell in this case is made out of just like uh, little sand grains and silk grains but uh, if they were in a diatom rich environment they will make their homes out of diatoms the same way that tintinids and other things that use agglutinated uh, techniques to build their homes will will do uh, jiggly yeah there's a course uh, in iowa lakeside labs which is where all of the uh Pretty much all the diatomists trained there as either undergrads or graduate students. And uh, uh, originally started by uh, uh, Charlie Reimer and Gene Stormer. And both of those guys have uh, ceased to exist, but uh, their legacy lives on in Mark Edland, who teaches the course now. And uh, and Sylvia Lee, the former student of Evelyn Geyser, another diatomist, and uh, they all took the course. They all now teach the course. So, uh, and my wife Carlin and I also took that course. And I teach a little diatom taxonomy course here at uh, at school, and I will be in the fall as well. But the summer course is a great way for people to get experience because they can go out and collect samples and then come back and basically learn diatoms. So, yeah. Uh, the 5X is actually just the magnification. Um, let's see. We are at 10X times 5X. If you want to know what the actual size looks like, it looks like that. So that scale bar is correct. Uh, it's on there right now a correct scale bar that's the 5x under the 10x objective scaled perfectly um, using a stage micrometer so no mistaking it Is having a grand time with this blob of junk. <laughs> Actually disassembling parts of it. I mean, there's parts of it stuck to it. Arm is kind of starting to bulb up on one side. Here it goes. Transferring mass, I guess. Pretty cool.
that class that uh, Pacific Plankton is talking about was a it's a uh, college credit class too. You can transfer the credit hours to your school, probably. Uh, I think it's run through Iowa State University, so um, you can take it for credit and transfer it to your college for college credit. I believe you probably need to make some arrangements with your university. But uh, I did it for graduate credit uh, when I first started at the uh, University of Nebraska. Didn't really need him. Hey, Jolkson. And thanks for giving him a shout out there, Pacific. You'll have to add commands like that someday. Well, it actually makes it easier than shouting people out. So that's why I do it. Also, you can customize it, which is nice. So just a real simple add command and then, you know, Piece of cake. Wonder if it works internationally. Well, this year they're doing a virtual one, so the class is uh, being taught through Zoom or whatever. Uh, normally, it's uh, it's an in-person field class, but this because of COVID, they're doing uh, they're doing it digitally. But we have had students in the past that were international uh, that I've I've been there when they had international students. So. Um, I don't know if they were taking it for credit, but I guess probably. So if you're if you're interested in becoming a diatomist, if I've convinced you that uh, <laughs> it's a career choice you're interested in for some reason, uh, then you could uh, give it a shot. Check it out. And it gets pretty, uh, usually it gets well, it's a good course, but it gets a lot of, uh, it usually fills up pretty quickly, and I don't know what the limits are for. Oh, something's really chowing on that thing. That times are cool. Oh. The gastro trick. Hello. Hello, little guy. Uh, I need to zoom out to 3x. I won't be able to keep up with it. <laughs> Too fast. Suddenly so become an ecologist, uh, but who knows? Maybe a diatom ecologist. Well, I'm a paleoecologist, and uh, that's where I learned diatoms. But there are also plenty of ecologists that are there, or people who are taking uh, a taxonomy sort of uh, designed degrees. Most of the students that are there are graduate students, but um, because most undergrads never heard of a diatom, or they maybe just heard about it once uh, in a biology class somewhere. So... This is putting my Etch-a-Sketch etch etch skills to the test. Really cooking around. There's a diatom. Hello, diatom. A little naviculoid. Thought it was gonna sit still for a second so we could zoom in, but not. One of the problems with the gastro tricks is that they uh, they're busy little guys. You can see the cilia that it's using to sort of crawl around with all around the outside of its body. There's sort of like a haze. Hey, it found the uh, Daphnia molt or skeleton or whatever. And it looks like it's like, ooh, delicious bacteria.
Uh, I've actually had people uh, write Pale Ecologist before, open set, where they, uh, the uh, word will autocorrect it to Pale Ecologist and then they'll forget to fix it. <laughs> and uh, that one always makes me laugh. When word attacks. Okay, there you go. There's a nice close view of this guy. You can see those little cilia. It's like a tiny little dragon with two tails. Flying around. One of those Chinese dragons. I think there was somebody that promised to make me a video game where the objective of the game is to keep the microbe in the center of the field of view. And then uh, maybe you could have a Twitch crowd watching you do it. <laughs> and they get madder the farther you get off of the screen. Pretty a great game. I could win at that one, maybe. Maybe. back out. This thing took us way off course. I followed that thing like a fool and now I have no idea where we were. Maybe the uh... Maybe the chronometer at the top of the screen will help us figure out how far off course we are. Oh, there's a test state amoeba without the amoeba. Or at least its legs aren't out. This is just the shell. From a test state amoeba. It looks like it barfed out the amoeba. The, the amoeba's uh, maybe no more. And that's the dead amoeba sitting there. <laughs> Uh, I don't think it's the same one. This, one. this one doesn't seem to be moving. That one seemed pretty healthy. Oh, the uh, Anopolis skeleton. I don't remember it being next to this either. So I think there's just several of them in here. Oak. That's just a molt, I think. The exoskeleton of a, uh, a copepod. Could be bedtime, but I don't I don't think that was the same one. <laughs> Let's not get attached. Uh, I'm always attached to the amoebas. Uh, they're cute. And uh, I think they're hard. We've been raided. It's show and tell live. Wow. Hello, Show and Tell Live with Party of 15. Welcome in. Uh, you scared me with the, uh, the rating noise that, uh, that I put on there to scare myself, apparently. We're looking at uh, some uh, lake organisms. And Good news, everyone. I brought these to Show and Tell today, I guess. Uh, A joke. Uh, we're looking at pond organisms, and uh, and then uh, I try to follow them around, and they try to escape wherever I am, and it lead me down some sort of a dark path. This guy right here. This uh, we were calling him uh, Wiggly Tongue. Wiggly Tongue right here. He's got a little wiggly tongue uh, that he uses to crawl around with. So. Uh, stay away. 
anybody who can crawl with their tongue is bad news. The bad sign. Yeah, it's like a flagellate some type. Pretty cool. <laughs> Wiggly tongues, what they called you? <laughs> That's your spirit animal? <laughs> Very small spirit animal. These other little guys in here are diatoms that are right there, but uh... That's Spirogyra, type of algae. Oh, we're way over on the edge now. Somehow we went through the whole slide. Like maybe there's another testate amoeba in there. Oh, a Euploides? Hello. Where might you lead us to? Do you know where the rotifer is that I saw earlier? Did you take me there? No? Leading us deeper into the abyss, exactly. Uh... <laughs> Uh, Wiggly Tongue's official genus. Uh, I actually have a book on a protozoa over here next to me, and I could look it up. I used to, I looked it up before. I just lost the, uh, the name of it because I don't look at the Wiggly Tongue little guys very frequently. This one's Euploides. We see this one a lot, Euploides. Uh, it's got like a uh, sort of long cilia that it uses to kind of crawl around with on the front and the back. And then little short cilia around its body. So this one uh, we, see, uh, we see pretty frequently here. Uh, do I think they have souls? No. But uh, I also don't think larger organisms have souls. So, you know. I'm biased. <laughs> Not into souls. Do I think they could play soul music? Maybe. Uh, I have a question for you if you do think they have souls. What happens when they divide? Uh, who gets the soul? And if they keep dividing infinitely, one keeps. The soul divides. So each one has half of a soul, and then each one of those has half of a half of a soul, and then each one of those has half of a half of a half of a soul. I feel like that creates a problem. You know? <laughs> A pretty serious one, because some of these organisms, like amoeba, they've been around for, you know, the same organism's been around. It just keeps dividing. They are essentially eternal. And uh, their clones form from cell division. So... <laughs> that's, a, that's an interesting idea, Mr. Peppers. Uh, I don't know which one's the right-hand one, uh, because if we're on the top of it looking down, the right-hand one is one side, and if we're on the bottom looking up, the right-hand one's the other side. Uh, very uh, philosophical question for us. But I'm going to go with no. Uh, final answer. So I don't think they have a soul. Another test data amoeba skeleton down there. Another Euploides. Oh, it did lead us to a rotifer. Hello. 
like a super slow moving rotifer right there. Uh, that's its foot. And that's its head. Zoom out just, just a little. You can see the whole organism. The rotifer's foot has three little toes. Three. And it uses those to grab onto things. And that thing is called an antenna. And then it's got... Uh, if it fe starts feeding, it's its head will sort of open up and little propeller-like things will come out uh, here when it is really sleepy. But it won't move much. Hold its whole head in there like a turtle. It's going to pull out its feeding parts, or what it's doing right now. Waking up a bit, maybe. He pulls out the, uh, the little affiliated corona. It's going to be spectacular. Oh, uh, that looks like it's got an egg, maybe. This thing? Seems to be differentiated from the rest of it. Hold its feet in. It's sleepy. It's very sleepy. It's moving very slowly for a rotifer. This is a deloid rotifer. And it's a female. And I know that because they're all female. Every single one of them. Uh, and they've been that way for 75 million years. Only female. Pretty cool. Yeah, well, it's not 75 million years old. Uh, this one's probably just days old. But, uh, lineage is probably that old. Could be going into labor. I think that I think that thing is an egg. It seems to be differentiated in like circular mass inside of it. But... <laughs> Hopefully they don't invent micro cars. Uh, the type of rotifer is deloid. It's actually got a B in the front. Deloid. If you were trying to look it up, like if you wanted to Google them, the silent B is the tricky part. And uh, I bet Pacific Plankton could spell that one even with the silent B in the front. Say it all the time. <laughs> I'm waiting for it to flip out the coronas and just start like munching on all this bacteria that's around. Maybe we need to play some more upbeat music for it. <laughs> Bedell Maximum, exactly. <laughs> you know, there's a B in the front. Just be something, Rotifer. You didn't know bees could be silent? Uh, you know, sometimes they can. I got some pictures of uh, sleeping bees before in my macro photography, uh, my macro lens on my camera. And that's the best. When the bees fall asleep, they get sleepy and then they fall asleep on a flower. And, uh, cause they can't close their eyes and, uh, the, uh, they let me get super close then. 
<laughs> you think I could make this ASMR? Uh, for my bird streams, where I don't talk at all. Uh, those ones I list as ASMR. Because we just listen to the birds. Uh, and for my SEM, I usually list it as a visual, as a visual ASMR. Because uh, visually stunning images. This is a super big rotifer, and it's super slow. I don't think I've ever seen one this slow before. Chilling out. <laughs> subtle, yeah, exactly. In the word subtle. Uh, the B takes the place of a T or something. For what reason, nobody knows. Yeah. When uh, when my daughter learned all the uh, the words with the silent letters in the front, they didn't do Deloid Road Furs. Uh, I don't know why. <laughs> you pronounce it as subtle or subtile? Okay. Uh, I guess no one, no one's gonna judge you for that. We're in a, we're in a judgment-free zone about the silent B here. Do you want to call it the uh, Bedeloid rotifers or Bedeloid rotifers or whatever? You can. And if you want to say sub, oh, no, go for it. There's also this uh, giant stream of bacteria around it over here, going nuts. Yeah. Pretty cool. Oh, it's got a little bit of its feeding apparatus going on right there. It's like, oh, there's some food around me. It's thinking about it. Thinking about pulling out the big guns. Like, ooh, there's a lot of bacteria here. Maybe I should eat. Those are just the little ones. Got little tiny hairs that's wiggling around right now, just kind of sensing what's out there. Little mustache. Waiting for it to just go raw. Pulled out the big guns, start consuming everything. <laughs> hey, pragmatic. Yeah, it's not really doing a whole lot of rotary. It's got the mouth, uh, it's got the little mouth cilia going now, the ones that are right on its mouth. Just barely starting to like, hmm. Maybe there's some food out there. Waiting for it to pull that thing in and then pull out the big spinners. Pragmatic, you missed it. Uh, Pacific Plankton bought uh, wing Wingspan even playing each other. We're both learning the game. 
And I mentioned it to Dell, and I think the three of us are gonna play. We're gonna have a wingspan stream with all three of us. Gotta get good. Can't lose to Dell. Yeah, triple stream it. Yeah, everybody would be like, what is this? Birds everywhere. Oh, I don't know who would win. <laughs> uh, hey, mommy, I am not a microbiology professor or teacher. I am a professor of environmental geoscience. Technically, I'm a paleoecologist. So I look at diatoms under the microscope, but dead ones mostly, ones that have been gone for a while. And uh, uh, use them to reconstruct past environments. Sort of like a paleontologist more than a microbiologist. But I also have to understand the ecology. So it can't just uh, can't just look at the dead things. You kind of need to look at the living things that are associated with them. And I also work in lakes a lot, which is why I'm interested in organisms that live in lakes like rotifers and amoebas and all these little guys actually. I see dead thing. Yeah, for sure. Lots of dead things. Oh, this thing seems like it's just teasing us with the big spinners. What senses does this blob have? Uh, taste, probably. That's, uh, sometimes they have like a limited light detection, sort of eye spots, like these red dots in here and up here, some little dots on their bodies that are red, that are sometimes little eye spots that allow them to sort of detect light. Uh, and that's pretty much it. So, but I think they have chemical sensors. And light. Yeah, photoreceptors basically that tell them light or dark. Good news, everyone! And this thing that's up here that's sticking out is an antenna, probably where they're sensing this uh, little tube that's up at the top there. Uh, right there. That's an antenna. That's probably where the chemical sensing is going on. Receptors. Yeah, yeah, they probably have some sort of vibration detection. That would not surprise me at all. They come. Oh, put them out just for a second there. Started to do some tasting. Pulled out the big brushes. Here they come again. Now we're talking. Just needed to wait a little bit longer. 
and to be patient for it, I guess. Still thinking about it. There they go. There they go. Now he's eating. You're wondering what I was waiting for. That was it. That's where they get their name from. Rotifer. <laughs> like a buzzsaw, exactly. They're like a vacuum cleaner. And, uh... So the mouth hole... This thing. Call it that in and then it spins these things and it pulls the food towards their mouth hole which is this thing and then they come into the body and this is the mastax uses to chomp yeah you can see it moving right there and then the food goes into the food path Oh, the, uh, the bubble's coming our way, too. <laughs> that is the air bubble, which is bad news. Yeah. It's like, what? What is this? What is this? That's the, uh, the air bubble, basically. Basically, it reached the end. Slides start to dry up. So if we zoom out, we'll see... Our poor little rotifer is actually encapsulated in there. <laughs> and now it's being closed off. That's a bad sign. <laughs> now it's in the bubble. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we gotta rescue it at this point, I feel like. It needs to come off. Or we're gonna lose the rotifer for good. I feel like it doesn't deserve that from us. And I've got a lot more material we could look through, so... can dry out just fine. The Deloid Rotifers can actually handle desiccation, but uh, they can't handle the cover slip. <laughs> so that part kind of needed to be rectified or else the, the Rotifer was gonna have some pretty serious trouble. So, there go. See what else we can find. Give us a reason to go looking around. A little spinny green, flagellated green algae. The Euploides. There's another one. Ooh, that uh, little spinning guy is a collapse, I believe. There's a lot of little tiny guys in here. That's a uh, Euploides again. Diatoms. Oh, it's a Clusterium type of Desmid. Little moon shaped uh, Asterium. Pretty cool. 
<laughs> officially a lifesaver, yeah. Uh, thanks, P Mommy. Uh, trapped by the air bubble. <laughs> Good clip. Good clip, Seahorse. We saved it, though. So there's that. Asterium's not gonna go anywhere. They just sort of sit there. We got a good view of it though. Uh, earlier I mentioned I, I saw a Volvox in one of these slides. So I'm hoping we'll come across another one of those. What? Like a plant piece. Big things sometimes weird me out because I'm looking at the tiny stuff in here. The piece, uh, a little fringe of Daphnia. That is the molt of a rotifer. Uratella or something like that. Saw one of those earlier. There's a rotifer. That one is sleeping or dead. And I think this is maybe a chrysophyte? Oh, it's a pediastrum. That's an algae. For sure. It's uh, two sets. Off. Yeah, pediastrum. Here's a little, one of those rotifers that we saw before, uh, that was also not moving much, but the insides were moving. This one, I think, is dead. Uh, but you can see really nicely the little, f that's its foot, two little toes that come off. And they usually grab onto stuff with that, and then, uh, like, it's under decomposition. Do they really sleep? I don't think so. They might do some sort of hibernation-like state, though. A bit like what we would think of as sleeping. The Euploides in this sample. Barajara, the edge of our the edge of our world it extends out a little bit. Our ciliates out here. It looks like it's dividing. Or maybe they just made friends. Looks like it's becoming two. They have a circadian rhythm. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> Friends. <laughs> Check off made friends. You did it. We're, we're actually out in no man's land. We're out outside of the cover slip edge over here. Try to see what I missed with the cover slip on. Hey, it's our friend the wiggly tongue guy. We've seen this one before. When the uh, the raid first came in, this is what we were looking at. One of these guys. This is a big one. What a crazy tongue. 
Wiggly tongue. He's uh Oh. Oh, this is very cool. We found something neat. This guy. See, he's on a stalk. And then it's got a ring of cilia around sort of bell-shaped body. So this is probably what, Epistylus? Is it Vorticella or Epistylus? Maybe it's Vorticella. I think that looks retractable. That stock looks retractable. There's a, a diatom in the background escaping. <laughs> this one's like, get me out of here. That thing's giant and creepy. Vorticella. Yeah. Hilkson's got it figured out. Oh, something got pulled in. You can see they're creating a little bit of a a uh, a gyre here, a little bit. Not spinning its little hairs super fast. You can actually kind of see what they do. Now it's starting to starting to wiggle them a little bit harder. That is a big one, actually. Yeah. Uh, yeah, some of them actually can uh, pragmatic. They can get enough uh, sort of spinning the cilia motion to propel themselves. And the rotifers will do that too sometimes. They'll actually use it to move from one side of the uh, stage to the other You could, if you watch them. Bouncing ball got right in there. Uh, they'll start to spin it, and if they don't, basically they would get pulled off in the direction that they're spinning their cilia. So they have a sort of a stalk-like structure to keep them attached. Otherwise, they'll get loose. And some of them will detach it on purpose. Uh, I've seen those happen. They go flying across the stage sometimes. Kind of neat. We can come back and find another one of those under the uh, cover slip. We're off outside the cover slip still. Cover slip over there to the left. I left. I guess it's your right. Whole bunch of rotifer molts. Floaties. Looks like a there's a test state amoeba here. At least one, maybe two.
sort of ciliated green algae. Yeah. Look. Nitsia sigmoides. Uh oh. It's about to go. So it's like a single ring of cilia around the top. Shaped like a gumdrop. Athena, hello! How are you doing? We're looking at some microorganisms from a pond. We do sometimes in the evening stream. And we're hanging out until Pacific Plankton stream starts. Then we're gonna go raid her. Got another hour of this, probably. I don't know, is, uh, is Laura still here? Maybe we'll dig out some water bear material if Laura's still here so she can see. <laughs> you were hissing at the Nitzia, okay. Good idea. You gotta let them know that nobody likes them. Important. If there's anything new in this one. I actually have a different sample we could look in as well. I collected two samples. There's one of those gumdrop guys. That guy's really roaming. Spirogyra. Here's another gumdrop. Oh, that's weird. That's not a gumdrop guy. I don't know what that one is. The ciliate. Some kind of ciliate. I don't know that one. Spinning like crazy though. <laughs> oh, it's like a it got stuck and then it unstuck itself. And the next thing you know, it took off. Pretty cool. Oh, it's a Euglena. A little Euglena. Hello? Tiny little Euglena. Oh, and there's a little one of these crazy little spinning balls with a cilia all around it, or flagella all the way around it. Those are flagella. Flagella. Oh, 
fought one of those before, but I don't know what it is still. Some sort of assist. Okay, Tom. Ladies again. Another one. The whole chain of diatoms right there. Posterium that we saw before. We were going through in a less organized fashion. Uh Amoeba? Cool little amoeba. Little diatom creeping around the front of it. In dangerous territory. Like a rota for cyst. The sample was collected from a little tiny pond with cattails in it. But the dragonflies were all flying around. And stuff some of it into uh, a little centrifuge tube I had with me. Posterium again. Different one. And uh, and I went on my way. Went back to taking pictures of dragonflies for a little while. And I collected it on Sunday. Probably the reason we're seeing a lot of like debris in these, and also so many ciliates is because it was collected from, you know, just some little stagnant pond where the cattails were. Sure. Seen that one before. Not that exact one, anyway. A state amoeba. Dead rotifer carcass is around. Oh, found another little glio trick. A uh, glio gastro trick. Get confused. Follow this guy for a little while. Good news, everyone! Shadows within. Hello. Welcome in. Uh, you need some light? Got some shadows inside? You're gonna have to head out soon. Okay, it's fine. We got you, Pack. We'll come raid you when your uh, stream starts. So, I'm assuming that will be around midnight, and an hour. To, uh, to get it together. Okay. 
well. We'll see you then. Microscope friends, yes. I'm not sure what those things were inside that amoeba, or amoeba-like thing. Or they were cilia. Could also be that it swallowed something and was digesting it. That's a uh, distinct possibility, but it had amoeba legs. Those are Sparagyra. Pseudopod uh, components are kind of distinct and definitely made me think it was an amoeba. Could have been something else, but I doubt it. Could have been something inside amoeba. Sure. They do eat stuff. Aragyra? Wiggly tongue guy? Up to the edge. Okay. Somewhere I've got another sample. Give it a look. And a nice home uh, dream. Wilkson, you're up late. Like a night owl. You were watching my stream, you found yourself intrigued. You never just watched microorganisms go about their day like this. I have good news for you. Uh, if you want to check out more like this, there's a bunch of streamers, including some that were and, were and are in the channel. There's a bunch of them. Back in the day, like four or five of us. It wasn't all that long ago. So it's growing, and I'm excited by that, because uh, there's more science, more interesting organisms on. I think it's great. And uh, like Jolks in here. Uh, they're on during the middle of the day. Pacific Plankton's on late at night. And I'm on whenever I feel like it. Uh, but usually in the afternoon. From the scanning electron microscope. And from the light microscope at home. Usually in the evenings. So I also sometimes stream from my camera. Or from a stereoscope, stereo microscope. That's a diatom. That there is Cirella again. That one is living, crawling around. There's another diatom over there next to it. This one that's sort of like here, that's a Cirella. And this one, sort of Fragilaria. This one doesn't look like it's too healthy, but this guy, that one's doing fine. All those are the chloroplasts right there. That's a big diatom. We can see it pretty easily, even at the scale. The frustrules, frustrules made out of silica. More diatoms in a chain right there. More diatoms. Temple has a lot of 
uh, interesting little diatoms. There's some more, all living on a clump. Wiggly tongue guy. Here's a cool diatom. Shaped a bit like a lemon. That's probably a nominees. Be my guess, based on that shape. The its chloroplasts are doing quite well as well. So diatoms have a silica cell wall around the outside edge. That's this dark outline that you're seeing. And this is a raphid diatom. This dark line that you see running down the middle of the valve is the raphi, which it uses to crawl around with, uh, sort of like a snail or a slug. And then this golden brown colored blob in the middle is actually the chloroplasts. Which it's using to collect light. Pretty cool little diatom. Just a skeleton of a diatom right there. For comparison, that one's pretty small. On the edge. Sample's got a lot of diatoms in it. That's another Sorterella. Sorterella. Lemon shaped guy, Anamanis. Fragilaria. Little colonial Fragilarioids. More little colonial fragilarioids. This sample was actually collected from uh, the adjacent pond to the little guy. Cat tails were. This one is the one that people fish out of and you know get their scenic pictures in front of. And I was actually out just taking pictures of dragonflies. A hobby of mine is to do nature photography. And uh, at a spare hour, basically snuck out, grabbed these samples, and then took a bunch of pictures of uh, dragonflies in an hour. Managed to get home just in time. Diatoms, some green algae, plastic fiber. Diatom. Not a lot of wiggly stuff in these. Some pretty neat looking diatoms. Surrellas are everywhere. Big ones. Seem pretty healthy. Not crawling very much, but it's got a lot of chloroplasts. That's a star niece, a diatom right there. This sort of cross shape. The diatom is kind of kite shaped, and then it has sort of a cross that goes through the middle of it. That's the uh, Daros, where they get their name from. And went the wrong way. There's another little Cerverella right there, the diatom as well. Lots of diatoms. Sort of funny when we do the evening streams, where we look at other things, we almost never see a lot of diatom. Uh, another Cerverella. Or Gyra, that's... Not a diatom, green algae.
Ostracod skeleton looks like. Not totally sure what that is. healthy rotifer. We waited around for that other one all this time and then there was this one just hanging out doing its thing. Perfect. Any of the people from Show and Tell who raided us still here in the channel? What was Show and Tell doing? Oh no! <laughs> it's, it's paleontologizing with a giant raid. Hello, paleontologizing. How are you doing? We are looking at a little rotifer that I found. You picked a good time. It's uh, it's got its uh, corona out. It's spinning them at us. I can mostly pay attention to chat when that happens because uh, it's it's doing all the hard work for me by being gorgeous. Uh, this is a beauty. This is uh, a deloid rotifer. It's a female. We talked about this before. Uh, we know this because all deloid rotifers are female. And they have been. They mentioned to the stream earlier They've been, uh, for 75 million years, they've been only female, asexual reproduction, and, uh, well, pull up a chair. doing fine, doing fine. So, how was the stream? What'd you guys talk about? Let me guess, let me guess. Dinosaurs. Uh, hopefully. There's a lot of, uh, dinosaur emotes coming at me in the chat, so... It's great. Keep them coming. What's going on here, lady? See the back end? They've got three little toes. The front end. That's where the head is. One's being a little finicky. I kind of have to zoom out probably a little bit because it does not want to stay in focus. It's looking around for food. It's trying to figure out which is the best direction to put out its... Uh, Sweeper brushes. Another weirdo rotifer. Yeah, that's what we got. Uh, they're gorgeous. You might think they're weird, but I think they're kind of cool. Also, I got my battery light flashing for you. Just for you. Stream was good. I was super tired after teaching today. We mostly watched old Smithsonian documentary from the 80s and talked about how much dinosaurs have changed since then. That's actually kind of a cool idea. Good news, everyone. Uh, I taught today too. Uh, I had a, a, um, a colleague ask me if I would do a guest lecture on how diatoms are used in paleo environmental reconstructions, especially looking at um, nutrient reconstruction and uh and lake stratification which are both things that i'm quite uh, well versed on so i already had most of the talk together and i just tweaked it a little bit uh it's a talk i've given many times but uh because people often ask me to talk about like hey what do you do uh what good are diatoms and uh and so it's nice to uh dust that one out and dust it off a little and, and give that talk again. But uh, not very tiring, because uh, it was like a Zoom talk for like a half hour. And then uh, the rest of my day, pretty chill. So hanging out with my daughter, hung out a bit with the, the kids in my lab for a bit, you know, did some research, and that's it.
Uh, how many cells is that? Uh, that's a lot. That's a multicellular organism, so many cells. Um, we do look at single-celled organisms on here quite frequently. So the diatoms are single-celled. Uh, and many of the ciliates are single-celled. Uh, <laughs> I think the diatoms have evolved since... Uh, concepts of the diatoms, or dinosaurs have evolved, not, not the actual dinosaurs. I think they're done evolving. All of them. They've evolved into birds, and then, uh, you know, the birds are now evolving. Yeah, the battery! Uh, I made a command for the battery. Like this. Battery. And also, when people tell me the battery's flashing, I have a flashing command now. Look at that. Tanner's telling me about low battery. Ew. You're number two. Imagine having vortexidus in your head that just sucks everything in the room into your mouth. Yeah, that's cool. I I think I probably would like it. Uh, I would just ask my daughter to open bags of Doritos and chips and set them on the other side of the room, and maybe like peg peg them down so that I don't suck the bag into my mouth. So, and then I would just sit there and spin them. I wouldn't have to do anything. <laughs> what flavor Doritos? Taco flavored Doritos. Uh, I, I'm going with the non-traditional flavored. <laughs> Disclaimer, the battery's fine. Don't worry about it. Uh, yeah, I've got five batteries. And two of them are are low. So if I planned on doing six more hours of streaming, which I don't, we, Good news, everyone. we could run into some trouble, but we won't. So I'm just holding out. Well, hello. Good news, everyone. Oh, look at this. My cat, Wednesday, she wants to look at what's in the microscope. What's in the microscope is a rotifer. You knocked it out of focus. Good news, there everyone. you go, look in there. No? You'd rather just look at it on the screen? Don't like being held, put you down. This is awkward. <laughs> that's, uh, that's Wednesday. She's named after Wednesday from the Adams family, but we didn't name her. The uh, the pound did. There was a Morticia too, uh, and I asked if they had a Pugsley, and they said no. So uh, we went with Wednesday. Wednesday's the best of the Adams family, hands down. And if you don't agree with me, we can fight about it. Uh, Muffin, we are looking at. A deloid rotifer. Uh, the deloid rotifer have this particular body plan with three little toes and uh, these big propeller-like things that spin out the top of their heads called corona. Uh, that's the corona right here, these things. They're not actually spinning like a wheel spins. They're actually just wiggling, uh, but they look like they're spinning because they're doing it like this one, then 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 this one, like that. So like it's doing the wave across its head. And then its mouth is actually this thing right here. So these are the sort of creating the gyre that you see on both sides and it's sucking food towards its mouth. And then, thank you, uh, it's turned its head down for us. So you can get a good view of the mastax, which is this feature right here. It's inside its body where it's chomping on stuff. That's not its heart, that's actually how it's eating. Good news, everyone. Uh, if stuff gets in here and it doesn't want it, it spits it back out. But uh, then it goes through the mastex into the intestine, which is down here. And then uh, when it's done with it, it comes out here somewhere, you know, the uh, posterior end of the organism. So this is uh, a female I mentioned. They're all female. 
uh, every rotifer that's deloid rotifers only are they're all female that's not to say that all rotifers are female just the ones that belong to this group all female <laughs> you disagree wednesday cannot light a bulb with her mouth uh they also did not have a cat named fester and i asked uh, about pugsley and fester but uh i do still feel like wednesday was the best yeah she's got little mittens uh, Aqua flavored. Yeah. Yeah, a ED style bag. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Not tropical flavored. Uh, what would those be? Like coconut flavored Doritos? That sounds gross. I don't. I don't think that's a good idea. I recommend not making coconut flavored Doritos. Never encountered them. Well, maybe they don't have them in California. But uh, if you want, I can go get the bag. We have some, I think, right now. I can prove it. It's real. Uh, Wednesday and Cousin It are the best. You like hair. <laughs> Bester, exactly. Uh, mastication parts, exactly. Uh, what's the lifespan of this particular organism? So, you know, like, it, it makes, it lays eggs that are basically clones. So, you know, but like this particular, like, instance of the organism, uh, months, something like that. Uh, a lot of times they're inactive for a long part of their life. They can basically go dormant and then come back from being dormant. So, uh, yeah, they've got an internal mouth. Pretty cool. Um, <laughs> uh, you should get Wednesday a friend named Robinson Crusoe. Oh, that's a different Wednesday, Mayor. Uh, <laughs> coconut shrimp. Ugh. Oh, yeah, I think that's Friday you're thinking of. Yeah, the, the battery. You just want me to put flashing in, don't you? I'll do it. Flashing. There you go. I think two of those uh, same chatters have been uh, Digital Seahorse, so warning me about the battery. It's okay, it adds tension and it makes people feel like at any moment the stream could just end. <laughs> uh, it's possible. Chomp, chomp. Uh, just put on your webcam over the battery so that... Oh, I could do that. Uh, you mean like, hide it. Uh, let's see, where's my webcam? Gotta unlock it. There's nothing wrong. There's nothing to see here. Now, do you feel better? Do you feel like you can relax and just watch the crazy rotifer? Now you don't have that intimidating battery flashing at you. Uh, also, now it looks like I'm looking at the rotifer when I'm looking back at the screen to try to see what... Looking this way to see the rotifer, it's actually back there, but it looks like I'm looking at it. So, maybe this is more appropriate. The camera's over there. So. Sorry, Reno lost signal and is leaving chat. Says bye. Bye, all. Okay. I don't know what that means. Who's Reno? Or is Reno a place? Reno the artist. Okay. Person. It's fine. Bye, Reno, and uh, get your power back, I guess. Good luck. It's just bowed up. I'm gonna eat this thing. It gets too close.
Much better this way? Uh, I mean, it's fine. Now I don't know, but, uh, but I could because up here on the top, there's a little tiny version. And the little tiny screen has the battery light flashing, so. But now you guys can relax, fine. And uh, I'll worry about it. You don't need to worry. It can feel that little vibration that I made when I turned the camera. But it stopped, it was this. So, uh, what time is it? 11.30. You guys want to see Water Bear? I dig out a Water Bear. I could give it a try anyway. can't promise it'll show up. We do have uh, the Water Bear from last time. I think, Nothing is impossible. I think we you can imagine it. still have that Water Bear uh, on a slide somewhere. Yeah, Desmer. Pretty sure Desmer's over on my desk still. You just put water on the slide and see what happens. Let's do that. Uh, you guys watch this for a second. I'm gonna go see if I can find the Desmer slide. My disarray desk back there. We'll see. On the slide for Gubu, which is another water bear that we had from a long time ago. All right, I found the Desmer slide. We got it. All right, we're gonna put this lady to bed and hang out over here on the desk. And uh, we'll just take some of the water from the pond, drop it in on the Desmer slide. if we can find him. Made this one without a cover slip before. And it still doesn't have a cover slip. And it's got a little bit of mix of those diatoms from the previous sample in it, so that's nice. Oh, and we accidentally found a, <laughs> a Daphnia or something right there. Spin around. Hang on, I'll see if I can get that one to stop. Yeah, there you go. Uh, from the pond sample, <laughs> we caught a, uh, caught a little Daphnia. I was sort of just sucking up the water, but it must have been swimming up there. <laughs> it looks like a little sea turtle almost. Uh 
and there's another rotifer too. Mix the two samples together in a way that's completely not scientific, but totally fine. Now we have diatoms and green algae and rotifers and Daphnia mixed in with our lichen sample. And we'll just see what happens. Besides this uh, Daphnia just sticking itself in our field of view constantly. <laughs> Desmer, was your first time watching my stream? Oh, cool. Uh, Desmer's a water bear, yeah. Uh, they named it, and I saved the slide. And because of the water bears can just sort of come back to a hydrated state, There's a possibility we'll find it and it will hydrate right in front of us. It takes usually about five minutes for them to sort of come about from their dehydrated state. At least most of the time when I've noticed them, that's about how long it takes. Oh, that is a Coronamid. The one with legs! Cool! We found a Coronamid. I guess if you pipe enough water from the lake in, uh, <laughs> the Coronamids will show up. Yeah, it's a, it's a, a larva for a, a non-biting midge. So, they will, uh, Potentially eat the water bear though, so we better find Desmer pretty quickly. <laughs> See if we can find him before the Ronomid does. Uh, they can also handle being desiccated, so like the water bear and the rotifer tend to live in sort of some of them tend to live in sort of shallow areas. They can manage it. I think there's other things for it to eat, but we don't really need to worry about Desmer very much. <laughs> the Daphnia just keeps sticking itself in our... Yeah, it's like, hey! Hey, check me out! There's a rotifer. Yeah, it's, uh, I think it's following the light around, which is pretty cool. Like wherever we go, the little Daphnia basically works its way into our our field of view. There he is. He's like, hey, how's it going? Hey! Nothing is impossible. Not <laughs> if you can imagine it. <laughs> uh oh. That's uh an ostracod. A little ostracod there. We've got a pretty interesting collection of organisms that we scooped out by accident. It would be funny if we also got the, uh, the nematodes and the water bears back into hydrated state. Just all on here hanging out.
This water might actually be a little bit better for them. It's a sort of natural lake water instead of... They usually use DI water uh, or rope pure water, which has nothing in it, but isn't really similar to natural conditions. So. Ostracod crawling around. There it is. Also quite excited about the light. Can I try calling Desmer? <laughs> Have I seen Jams and Germs? Uh, yeah, they're super famous. Uh, we were just talking about Jams and Germs. They visited with... Uh, um, Freckled Science the other day. They were there hanging out. and Oh, there's a dead Coronamid. And this one's got a bacteria around its face. A bunch of bacteria. Uh, how big is the slide? Slides are this big. That's the width of it. Fingers are. Sorry, the length of it and the width of it. So, normal microscope slots. The dimensions are... Probably on the box. 25 by 75 millimeter. Hello, the flatworm. That flatworm was also in this sample before. If you remember from when we were looking at Desmer, there were some flatworms in here. And uh, it wasn't in the sample that we had, so it actually came back from its dehydrated state already. Now it's crawling around. What is this beastie? Another ostracod. I see some things moving around in here, but I can't tell if it's from other organisms smashing them to them, or... Or what? I like the, uh... sample combination, though. It's cool. Got these... Crazy lake organisms in here kicking around. A little Daphnia. Well. 
On first pass, I haven't seen him, but it might take a while before they completely rehydrate. So... Might be waiting for just a little bit, which is fine. Face ostracods and other little things around while we're looking. Here's one. <laughs> hey, Del. How's it going? Uh, if you don't know who Del is, you should. Uh. Definitely give Del a follow. I'm gonna try calling Desmer. Uh, I can put out Cardi B. Tardy B. Here's Tardy B. You think that will help? <laughs> You're full of dinner. You're chilling at home. You're enjoying your night off. Good. We're getting ready for uh, Pacific Plankton's moved her streams to Tuesday. And, uh,. Uh, it'll start in about 15 minutes, so I'm doing pretty good. Look, there's a flatworm and It's just crawled right into our field of view, which is cool There it is Yeah, it's got some cilia around the outside, doesn't it? Pushing the wrong buttons. I'm gonna run away from this. Put out the box and then like, nope. Nope. This guy, though, he doesn't mind the box. Yeah, we're super zoomed in, so. It's got little things growing on the outside of the shell. The optics are slightly subpar because the... Uh, Uh, there's no cover slip. So, trying to Good news, everyone. revive a water bear that's in here somewhere, hopefully. Was last time. So we're kind of... I stuck some pond water in there with it. We've got like a mixed pond water, water bear, bee lichen combination. The slide. So we've got these uh, clearly lake organisms, ostracods, then there's a nematode that's not moving, that was here from the other stream. What that big hairy thing is. Big diatom. Seen a bunch of these, uh, the Rurellas. Doing okay. Uh, yeah, that's a uh, 10x, 100x total, right there. Yeah, in that realm. Good eye. Very interesting little guy. I 
think it's a worm. Doesn't seem to have a fixed shape, though. That's a dead Coronamid. Oh, a living one earlier as well. Over here on this side of the... What is it, Wednesday? <laughs> you want to come up again? Yeah, she was, uh, you couldn't see it, but she was reaching up the side of the chair and uh, patting my arm with her paw. Let me know that she wants petted. Giving me direction. And uh, just kept doing it. So I decided I better pick her up or else I'll never hear the end of it. Rotifer. There's the ostracod. Keeps inserting itself. There's another one. That. Uh, Good news, everyone. Ostracod. Thank you guys for the follows, and also thanks a lot for the raid paleontologizing. Thanks for bringing your crowd over here. Uh, great way to end the stream with a huge group of people coming in. It'd be great if we actually found a water bear. be a little too hidden in all this gunk. See this, uh, <laughs> is it Mars? No, uh, it's Earth. Little ball right here. That's either a rotifer or a water bear that hasn't hydrated yet. It has a sort of pinkish color to it. Uh, there's lots of things to stop and see. Sorry, I was sort of trolling around looking for a water bear for us. These are uh, diatoms right here. The lemon-shaped guy is probably a nominee. 
uh, Anomaly Scarafera. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes it's a, a waiting game and a hunting game mixed together. Because we need to sort of catch the water bears after they've rehydrated. I don't know how long that will take. Usually it's like five minutes or so, but sometimes they are asleep for a while after I put the slides back into water. So these little balls, that's a test state amoeba. It's sort of moving very slowly on its own. And uh, this thing, that's the pseudopod coming out. One's very much alive. Seems like it found something over here it's interested in. <laughs> Just reached its arm out. Television advertisements. Um, I think Keep Fresh is a great slogan. They managed to convince an entire continent, if not the globe, that eating a foot of bread was somehow good for you. What were the green lattice things? Uh, that was Spyrogyra. There, if you're still here. They're uh, a type of green algae. Their chloroplasts make that sort of lattice structure. It's actually in a spiral. Uh, kind of like a... Uh, helix shape. This little guy crawling along here could get eaten if that one of those pseudopods finds it. The uh, molt? Or rotifer? These little guys, the sort of lattice shaped things. Another valve for testate amoeba, but it's still in it. <laughs> We're a lot bigger than molecules right now. So probably not a molecular snake. More nominees, some more non-rejuvenated nematodes all over the place. I don't have a lot of patience for people who feel like they're downloading from the cosmos. There you go. There's a coronamid. That's how it came out. And okay, great. Now let's make it better. But, uh, you know, just writing from a place of understanding rather than from a place of fear. Or you're just grateful for any idea that comes along and you don't want to change it because you don't know how. The coronamid larva? Now the battery is dead. 
Now what do we do? little too long on the stream. <laughs> I think one of them is in your left eye. Okay. Uh, I don't recommend putting them in your eye. I think it's a bad decision. It has these sort of uh, retractable antenna. And you can see... I made my arrow way too big. Mouse is kind of spazzing out. You, go. you can see it's sort of retracting them. And uh, back in here, you can kind of see the digestive system moving around a bit. What's going on with my mouse? Doesn't like the camera running at the same time. They also have creepy little retractable legs that they can kind of pull in and out. <laughs> so many rare Pokemon. Yeah, exactly. We're getting all of them. The Flatworm, the Diatom, the Karanamid, Ostracod, Daphnia. We said a... There's a Daphnia right there. A little tiny sea turtle. It should have been called sea turtle or uh, lake turtles, mini turtles. There's a nematode that's actually back to life. That's a good sign. Another nematode coming back to life. The things that were on the stage, or on the slide initially, were nematodes and uh, water bears and flatworms. And the flatworms came back really quickly. The nematodes seemed like they took a little while to wake up. They're back with us now means we might get the water bears soon. I think I saw some rotifers. It did not look like the lake versions that we saw. Once the nematodes start coming back there, this one's coming back too. Starting to rehydrate. sign and that uh, pulse of algae that I brought in with the uh, diatoms and everything else that we came into the sample might be good for some of these organisms to get some food because they live in a very low nutrient environment like in able to actually eat some of them.
big blob of stuff. Another nematode coming back to life. And another. The first pass through, none of those were moving. They're all kind of wiggling about. Probably would have needed to start just a little bit sooner to try to get the water bears rehydrated in time to see some of them. See anything moving around in some of these bigger clumps that, that might be where they're hiding. So. Actually get to any or Seem to be doing fine. That weird little worm thing. Another nematode. Full of nematodes. Just chilling out. They should show us what's inside saliva. I don't know if th that'll be very interesting. Uh, let's see. The scale bar on the current view is just a hundred x. That scale bar is actually a little off. Um, for reference, I'll try to fix it, but my mouse is acting. Uh, let's see. No multiples. So that's about the size we are. Multiples. And that's a different type of worm that went crawling through there. Flatworm. Uh, those two nematodes, I don't know if they're reproducing. They might be. <laughs> they could have also just bumped into each other. They're kind of dumb. Uh, they don't really have a good sense of what's around them, so they might not know exactly what's going on. They might be like, is that me? Am I bumping into myself? Uh, I just took off. Tiny Arcade. At what point in evolution do you need a male and a female for reproduction? Uh, for sexual reproduction, all points. 
So you need to have male and female for sexual reproduction, or at least nominally male and female. Uh, but not all organisms reproduce sexually. Um, there's plenty of organisms that reproduce asexually. Uh, amoeba, for example, reproduce asexually. They just split. Where there was one, there's now two. What we call binary fission. Basically. And then some di some organisms do a little of both. So rotifers and uh, some of the Daphnia will do both. They have a sexual and an asexual reproduction cycle. Rotifer. Starting to come to everything's starting to come awake now. Or whatever this is is gonna wake up. It looks like it's a little cloud of bacteria around it. Usually a bad sign for whatever it is. Doesn't look like a water bear though. Looks like maybe it's a dead road fur. Which one is the bacteria? Uh, these little tiny... These little tiny things are bacteria. They're really small. Relative to these things. This is, I think, a dead rotifer. And I think that's just a consuming it. I'll give you an example. Some just clone themselves constantly, yes. Uh, amoeba just clone themselves. Planaria uh, and some of the other flatworms basically just can, can actually be chopped up into little tiny pieces and each little piece can grow a whole new version of the planaria. In fact, they did some tests and it needs um, something like 1 240th of the, of the worm like you can chop it up into 240 little parts and each one will grow a whole new worm. So uh, you could essentially just put that into a blender and uh, and then you get uh, 240 new planaria worms growing. So some of them are quite amazing in their ability to kind of respond to uh, that sort of damage they can just generate it okay so pacific plankton is around and uh, i don't know that we'll find any of our water bears i looked and none of them are rehydrated yet as far as i can tell so we're gonna just go ahead and raid pacific plankton also her that's a rotifer that we're looking at right there. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and raid Pacific Plankton. And um, I want to say thanks to everybody for coming over um, from Paleontologizing Stream. And before that, uh, we had uh, another raid by... Uh, Good news, everyone! That was uh, Show and Tell Live. Came in with a party of 15 people. And some uh, good follows came from both groups. Got uh, D. Lou, uh, Del Pier, A. Da Wan, uh, a nice Twitch user, Randy C. Photo. Fred likes mustard. Good for you, Fred. Uh, Andalor put Wednesday on the mic. We did we did do that earlier, Andalor. Uh, Jordy three thousand, Boba Binks, Muffin Else Matters. What a great name! Uh, uh, Granddad Christmas and Dottie Matrix all came over with paleontologizing, or shortly thereafter. 
and then uh, Shadows Within, Imami, uh, and Mr. Peppers one, I think came with Show and Tell Live, The Rays, uh, Rudnima, uh, all those people followed today, and we're about 13 people from 2,000 followers. So, that's pretty cool. Alright, run out of time. We'll see you over in Pacific Plankton Stream. Have a good night.